Today's video is a question, and the question is how many rabbits can uh, Australian government pull out of the head uh, to keep the property market propped up, um, and for that matter, world governments, uh, governments around the world, because their main revenue is from uh, the building industry, uh, employment tax-wise, uh, stamp duties, when you buy and sell uh, property, there's huge expenses, and they love they would love the property to keep going up, which is why the government's been laughing all the way to the bank uh, for the last few decades. So let's remind ourselves it all started with the first home owner grant where people were given money because they were just buying the first house and we know that that didn't improve affordability. What it did is just put that um, homeowners, uh, first homeowners grant straight into the pockets of developers. Uh, and then we've got the lower interest rates. Uh, granted, uh, the interest rates weren't uh, reduced just for the sake of uh, propping up the housing, uh, but it was done for the economy, false economy, some would say, and it was obviously done in the currency wars to keep uh, the uh, currency lower and be more competitive in the international market. And then uh, when that kind of didn't work anymore, stop working or in the middle of it just to make sure to top up the um, stream of money going into housing, they've let the Chinese investors in. So they're just buying up everything. And there is the latest trick that they've pulled. It has been in place for a while and they, um, the experts, uh, as you will see in the video just after this one, uh, that self-managed super funds uh, or for those uh, listening and watching uh, from the United States, it's equivalent of 401k, uh, so it's a super innovation um, um, uh, retirement fund. So what you're allowed to do is that we pull all your retirement out, uh, make it into a self-managed super innovation fund, and then um, leverage it means that if you've got hundred thousand dollars in superannuation fund and you want to buy property that's five hundred thousand dollars you can borrow four hundred thousand dollars depending on your situation uh, to buy that property so that's leveraged and, and as you will see in the next video I mean they're describing the situation that is um, around, uh, just around the corner as a bloodbath um, and uh, startling but don't take my word for it again what do I know? Not very much, so watch this video. Tell me what you think. DIY Super is a growth industry with around $600 billion tied up in self-managed funds. But there are warnings that debt-laden funds could be a ticking time bomb. A new report from Credit Suisse suggests self-managed super is the shadow banker behind Australia's property price boom. Now the former chair of the Financial Services Inquiry, David Murray, has repeated his call to ban borrowing to invest in super. Carrington Clark reports. Self-managed super is booming. Between 2006 and 2016, it went from being about 20% of the now $2 trillion super system to about one-third. I think it started when the GFC hit and people saw their managed funds fall in value and they said, I could do better myself. Noel Whitaker makes his living giving advice about superannuation, but for others who are less informed, it can be a minefield. If you're talking to somebody who's not particularly financially literate and they don't have a lot of cash in order to invest, they do have superannuation. So you might be able to talk to that person and talk them into setting up a self-managed super fund and using that money in a way that the trustee of their former fund would not have even considered using it. And one of those things that wouldn't be allowed is investing in property. What we're seeing are couples in their 30s and 40s withdrawing balances from their APRA regulated super funds, retail or industry, and transferring those into the self-managed environment for the purposes of buying leveraged property. Self-managed super funds are piling on debt and diving into property. And this has the experts concerned. Back in 2014, in his financial services inquiry, David Murray raised the alarm. He wants superannuation funds banned from borrowing to invest. He says it's a risk to the financial system. Superannuation funds should not be leveraged, including self-managed superannuation funds, because leverage magnifies risk. If the system is unleveraged, then if asset prices 
uh, rise, bubble and fall, um, then all the loss is contained within the superannuation funds and does not have, have another contagion effect because there are no forced sellers of other assets. The numbers are startling. The total debt in self-managed super rise by about 1,500 per cent or uh, grow by you know, over 70 per cent annually. Um, so that's a concern. Conservative estimates would suggest that there's around $150 billion now in property assets in self-managed super. The new RBA governor has warned that asset bubbles in property are a major concern. I'm struck by the fact that large financial disturbances are repeatedly caused by the same set of factors. And three stand out. The first and the most obvious is poor asset quality, and I'd have to say particularly in the area of commercial property development. Stephen Anthony says self-managed super is making things worse. Self-managed super funds are potentially exacerbating um, the peaks and troughs of the property market. So now you have um, mums and dads rushing into property investment um, using the taxed subsidised position of superannuation to do so, um, driving up asset prices. Um, feeding what is already clearly a property boom. And if the market turns, self-managed super fund trustees are on their own. Self-managed super funds don't, aren't, um, don't have the same access to public insurance in the sense that other funds do. Unlike industry and retail funds, self-managed super isn't prudentially regulated by APRA and some say given its size, it now should be. APRA declined an interview with the ABC, but in a statement, it said the cost of regulation would outweigh any benefits. And for the moment, the government agrees. Noel Whitaker gets the attraction to property, but worries people could be taken for a ride. The average Australian doesn't trust shares, but they love bricks and mortar. Most people are conned by spruikers into buying overpriced apartments, and they will get a bloodbath. And the risk is that bloodbath won't be contained.